Welcome to the MMA Lab, the hottest MMA podcast out there. I'm your host, Ian Butler, MMA veteran, Gore Kickboxing veteran, grappling world champion. For the, all the hottest details in MMA today, come to the MMA Lab on Believe. Boom, and we are back again. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a jam-packed week, though, because I don't think there's no fights this weekend. There's not a single fight this weekend in oh, honor of the... Boxing, right? There's what? Boxing, right? Yeah, but who cares about that? It, yeah, but I think it's Anderson versus uh, Tito Ortiz. Uh, his statement still stands. <laughs> there was Dana White's Contender Series last night, but I haven't uh, watched any of the last two weeks of that. So I don't know. I think it's interesting. I don't watch the if, uh, the honor of NFL kickoff is that is that, is that uh, NF, NFL kickoff is tomorrow. It is tomorrow, which is a great segue for Bet Online, which is one of our sponsors, which is the number one sports for pro and college football action to Bet Online. Head over to your mobile device, sign up today, receive your. 100% welcome bonus. Take advantage of the opening day promo of the Bucks and the Cowboys, which I don't, I don't know if I have anybody on my fantasy team with that. I just drafted uh, Monday. But uh, yeah, I go bet online to go betting. And then actually this Sunday and then uh, next Monday. So, and actually fights when we actually have fights probably in a couple of weeks. Uh, the 18th, I believe, is all the returning fight cards for UFC and Bellator. So there we go. On the they do have odds for the contender series on their website. What? Yeah, they do. So, uh, you, I, I, I will say this besides the whole, uh, <laughs> what was it? <laughs> what did you forget? You lost that guy thirty thousand dollars. I well, the twenty thousand dollars or whatever he bet last time. I can't, believe, yeah. I can't believe you lost that dude all that money. <laughs> but besides that, <laughs> ever seen you so upset for somebody else losing money in my life. Yeah. I have like all of four dollars in one of my bank accounts right now, so I feel like a, I feel a little bit like Jared Cannonier. You did well until I, I get paid this week. Look, I'll give you my advice. Obviously, it's fighting; it's anything gonna happen. But I also don't know what you're gonna bet on your amount. So that's that's on him. Yeah, that's, that's a good on point. him. That that is a valid valid point. I was shocked when I seen the ticket. Okay. So, yeah, but another thing in life, I'm Libra, which means balance. We have another one sponsor, which is Balance 7. So, can you take it away with Balance 7? So, we are also brought to you by Balance 7. So, I don't know if you heard, but apparently former NBA player Lamar Odom may be returning to professional basketball in Spain soon. Apparently, he's going to try out for Pau Gasol's team. He's been making a new product or been taking a new product. He owes the credit to Balance 7. Balance 7 is a pH balancing alkaline supplement drink. It's like vitamins or supplements in liquid form, just one ounce a day, three times a day, and in a week, you'll see the effects. Yeah, use Balance 7, and I think he also, uh, he did box Aaron Carter, right, and won? He did, as yeah. far as I know. I don't know I anything ha- else I about that. I'm, I'm judging he has the reach advantage because he's a fucking professional basketball player. A power forward that's probably like six seven. So I'm assuming your reach is fucking outrageous. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if he's returning to professional sports, that's fucking huge, man. Because I mean, like the dude, I think he I swear to God, I think he had like three or four heart attacks. Uh, on- I well when he was in that situation out in Vegas that we won't go too into. Um, (laughs) but 
you can see how balance seven has helped. And right now, if you go to balance seven.com and use the promo code believe you'll get $10 off their 32 ounce bottle. The bottle lasts 11 days, which is the perfect amount of time to fill the pH balancing drink, go to work again. That's balance seven.com and use the code believe B L E A V at checkout. I did work for him. It can work for you too. Yeah. Way to keep it together. King. <laughs> Someone has to around here. <laughs> Oh, Lamar. Sorry, Lamar, but he's a lot more balanced now. I mean, you know? that's good. He, he needs yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's doing fine. I, think he's uh, doing I wouldn't fine. say that. I mean, if you have to go to Spain to play basketball, like some people might think it's a dream, but like if you came from the NBA and then going to Spain, it's not good. I mean, Tyler Hansbrough, the dude who was legit in North Carolina, plays in, like, China now. How do you know about Tyler Hansbrough? Bro, I was, like, <laughs> the, he was the white boy idol, man, when I was Yeah, a bro, I played, yeah. The one year I played basketball, I played forward. and you know, one year. <laughs> you know. From Tyler Hans, Hansbrough's a Missouri boy. He's a Missouri boy. That's how I know about North, He went to North Carolina. Carolina, yeah, he yeah. did. And he was unstoppable. He won them a national championship. I think you won more than one. A couple. Yeah. A couple. A couple. Yeah, that was the last time they were good. And then he got drafted by, I think, the Pacers. Pacers. And nothing happened from there. <laughs> no, he did not do very well. No. Um, those boys are a little bit more faster in the NBA. Well, yeah. And now he plays in China. Okay, okay, okay. I guess China oh, still China. got a legit basketball market, they though. Basketball. What I've heard. Oh, they love basketball over there. Yeah. So, yeah. So, only they, only they love football. Did we? Do they love football? No, probably not. No, it's everything basketball. Basketball, fighting, basketball, martial arts. In China? Oh, I'm just saying, Wing yeah. League. Wing League. Uh, what fights did we have last week? Last, last week was the Barboza Chikadze okay. fight. And hey. This week it was uh, the Brunson Till card. The Brunson Till. Brunson Till. Ooh. That was the only card this week. That was the only card. Did that card deliver? Up until the main event, yeah. Damn, dude. You don't think the main event delivered? I think Darren Till tapped early. Shit, dude. I mean, but according to his coaches, he was fighting on a torn ACL that he got nine weeks ago. And then also, I guess, Derek Brunson had broken ribs. Everybody's uh, mostly beat up when you go to fights, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, you know, Darren had zero ground defense for anything. And anytime Derek had any type of control on him, it was evident. Dude, but like Darren Till used to live in Brazil. It doesn't mean anything. On time. It does mean something, bro. Like, first of all, he can speak straight Portuguese. It doesn't mean he can do jiu-jitsu. Yeah, he can but, speak like, fluent he went, Portuguese. But he did, he did Muay Thai in Brazil. I know, but like, you would think you're a dabble in a little jiu-jitsu, being there in the homeland, like a little bit. You know what I'm it, yeah, but there's jujitsu and then there's wrestling. And there's knowing it for defensive purposes and knowing it for offensive purposes. There's not a whole lot of, you know, American folk style wrestlers over in the UK. Period. And during COVID, you can't really get a whole lot of them over there either. Yeah, it wasn't good. No, it wasn't. Uh, but you could tell, I mean, so the, the big difference was, you know, on the feet, Darren was winning. The exchanges, you could tell Derek didn't want to stand. I mean, that was that was blatantly obvious that Derek did not want to stand with him. But uh, on the ground, it was Brunson all day. Yep. So what? I think he's one out of four in his last fights. Who till? I think the last fight he won was against Kevin Gaslow at Madison Square Garden. He beat KG, and then mm-hmm. he lost to Woodley. Whitaker. He well, That's he lost right. to Woodley before Kelvin. 
Yep. He lost to Woodley, moved up to middleweight. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, no, he lost to Masvidal before that. Oh, he got scorched. Yeah, he got knocked out by Masvidal, moved up to middleweight, uh, beat Kelvin Gaslam, uh, and then had a fairly back and forth up until the final round with uh, Robert Whitaker. And then he got submitted via rear naked choke against Derek Brunson. Yeah, it's not good, but I mean, you are facing the best of the division as well. Um, yeah, and the reason why he did move eight to middleweight, you want to talk about somebody that had horrible weight cuts, but at least still made it. He never missed. Like he was cutting weight that he lost his vision at one point. And mm-hmm. he said it was. I guess he was cutting from like two twenty down to one seventy, <laughs> and he came in one fight week at like two hundred at the beginning of the week. When he was still cutting down to 170. So he walked yeah. at 200 pounds. And he's cutting water, yeah? like he's dieting. At 200 pounds? Yeah, bro. Down, so from to down to 170? So we, if it's the week of the fight, there's no way you can like diet and like lose. I, he, I know he wasn't doing good during that time period. He uh, was cutting water. He was cutting water from there. Yeah, but he was probably starving himself too. So, I mean, it's the right way to do things in the wrong way. That's definitely the wrong way. Yeah. So, yeah, fucking sucks. But uh, I don't know where the hell we're going to go from here. Um, I mean, I think Derek Brunson will fight. Cannon Near, Darren Till will fight. Uh, Somebody, was Somebody was striking. Let's see. Who's in the middleweight ranking? Give him that um, Shabazian. Uh, Shabazian's 11. I don't think... When was the last time Shabazian fought? Well, he got handled by... Uh, Brunson. Brunson, and then he... Uh, uh, he lost to Hermanson. Yep. He lost to Hermanson in May, and that went a full three rounds. Yep. Um... Yeah, I could see him against Shabazian. That'd be a good way for both of them to kind of get back on their feet. I could also, you know, I could see Till against, uh, you know, Weidman. So you got... Uh, I don't know, man. If he, got, can't, if he can't stop takedowns, he can't, he can't fucking... Uh, he can't go up against Weidman. I mean, Weidman's not fighting again for like two years anyway, so... Um, Andre Muniz at 15, Kevin Holland at 14, to Brad Tavares at 13, Weidman at 12. Kevin, Holland? Kevin Holland's like at 14. Give him Kevin Holland. Um, no? I think that'd be good. I, honestly, uh, Kevin Holland's definitely that he more so. Sh- he needs a striker, bro. Well, as far as strikers go, I mean, you got – Brad Tavares, he doesn't necessarily like to wrestle. Oh, I forgot about Brad Tavares. Brad Tavares is 13. Holland's he's, 14. He's fucking been there forever. Shabazian's 11. Gaslam is 10. Uh, Uriah Hall's 9. I'd put him against Uriah Hall. That'd be a good one. Uriah right, Hall. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a great matchup. Uh, Sean Strickland at 7. Darren Till's at 8. Um, but we have to see what he does against Luke Rockhold. Who, Strickland? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, oof, that's a weird fight. That's coming up in a couple of weeks, I think. Um, yep. Jack Hermanson's at six. Marvin Vittori's at five. Brunson's wow. at four. Kennedy's at three. Paulo Costa's at two. I don't know how that's still a thing. And Robert that's Redeker's fine. at one. Dude, where the fuck has Pablo Costa been? Uh, getting his hair transplant. Money, right? What do you mean, money? Uh, I actually think he's got a fight lined up, believe it or not. If I remember correctly. Um, Let's see. Where is the news? Um, No, I thought I saw something where he had something lined up not too long ago. By the way, did you see the breakdown of the reaction video of Israel Adesanya and his game cheer 
watching the fight of Derek Brunson. Oh, yeah. Through it too. First of all, that's one of the most creepiest fucking things I've ever seen in my life. It's a yeah. dark room, and he's just sitting there, and he, and he doesn't even fucking make it. He goes like, huh. Yeah, but like, you know, it. it was the middle of the night over there. I know. So, I mean, it's not like it's going to be lit. <laughs> Is just cracks me up. Oh, he's just in his gate chair. Barely no reaction. He's just like, Ugh. yeah, because I, to be fair, I mean, it wasn't all that surprising of a finish by Brunson. Yeah, but Israel killed Brunson, bro, when they fought. Um, yeah. Killed. Yeah, but that's the thing. I mean, you know, if anything would have surprised Israel coming out of that fight, don't you think he would have reacted to it? Rather no, than just like honestly, it was like he like yawned, kind of like just like oh. To be fair, I did too. He's like oh, okay. I mean, it wasn't you know. I was more so upset with Till than I was happy with Brunson. <laughs> because fucking... Brunson barely had that locked in until tapped. So. Yeah, where's your fighting spirit, Till? Come on, bro. Uh, who knows? Fuck, bro. Who knows? If if I, if everyone knew that's how easy it was to beat Darren Till, I feel like he would have lost a lot more by now. He was the favorite going into this fight, too, by the way. That's the, sad. The betting favorite. So if you bet Derek Brunson, you won money. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Down to the co-main event. It is Tom Aspinall versus Sergey Spivak. And Tom Aspinall won via knockout in the first yep. round. Yep. yep. Um, I didn't see this fight uh, because I was in and out of being awake um, <laughs> all day. Uh, but from what I heard, he looked really, really good. Uh, even though it is Sergey Spivak, so it's not necessarily like impressive. You know, yeah, um, and listening to other people's breakdowns about it, you know, you expect someone who is touted as high as Tom Aspinall has been in the heavyweight division to do what he did to Sergey. No, for sure. Dude. And plus, yeah. that that heavyweight division right now usually it's always weak. Sometimes it has spurts when it's stacked. It's weak right now. Um. At so, least outside of the top 10, I would say it's weak. Wait, no prospects, bro. Uh, what, you going to put Greg Hardy in there? No. No. Believe it or not, Tom Aspinall's ranked 11. Is he? Yeah, Chris Dawkins is pretty good. Uh, Walt Harris is 12. Blagoj Ivanov hasn't fought in a minute. Sergey Pavlovich, Sergey Spivak, um, Augusto Sakai, number nine, Martin Tybura. Augusto, hey, I haven't seen him in a minute. He fought uh, Overeem. Oh, yeah. Who I don't know if you've seen Overeem's upcoming fight in glory uh, against Rico. Yeah, that's not going to be good for him. I, we'll see. Um, <laughs> uh, not. Shamil Abdurakimov at seven, Jarzinho at six, Volkov at five, Blades at four, let Derek Lewis at three, and Stipe at two. Okay. So top ten. I don't even know. I don't even know when Stipe is coming back. Uh, that's a good question. He's like eight, 80 years old, I think, at this point. So, nah, bro, that knockout set him back some years. That was the, one of the most nastiest knockouts. He already Very, sounded punched. He always had the most scariest knockouts, and just the way his knee bent, the way he went out, like he was out, out. So that's that's the most scary thing of all. I mean, I don't know. It sounded like he was already suffering from certain issues from getting hit the way that, or get fighting just the way he fights. So yeah, yeah. All right, uh, down. Alex Marino pick up victory. Against David Zavada. Um, yeah. Alex Morono might be the stiffest fighter I've ever seen in my life. 
but he fucking get finishes though sometimes. I sometimes. Know yeah. Like, I mean, he took out Cowboy too. Yeah, but uh, I mean, at the same, like, you know, he stands one way the entire fight. He kind of bounces yep. in and out, lands some kicks, lands some punches, but, you know, uh, he looked pretty good against Savada. Look at that. Um, the, dude, this fight, I definitely want to talk about. Khalil Roundtree beating Modestus Pekowskis, second yes. round. Yes. Now, the thing I want to talk about, this fucking kick that he threw. Yeah, the oblique kick. That tore his ACL, MCL, uh, PCL. They don't know that yet. It blew out his knee, though, bro. Yeah, it blew out his knee, but they don't know exactly what the damage is. He got his MRI today. Like, you know, I this guarantee, morning when well, I was getting I off work. his ACL is gone. I guarantee you, like, his MCL is gone. Definitely the ACL for sure, and a lot of the other L's are going to be gone. Right? Um, when I fought in glory kickboxing, it was a huge honor, especially because I have a grappling background. And I wrestled all my life. Um, I really worked hard to get there, to get my striking up, to even get there at that point, to uh, experience it. It was great. Um, in the rules meeting that everybody has in a locker room they told me oblique kicks are illegal right it's very dangerous we are not trying to end anybody's careers here that's what the ref told me right um that's probably one of the top striking organizations in the world period right besides Top rank boxing and stuff like that, you know. Um, glory kickboxing. As far as kickboxing promotion, they're the number one kickboxing promotion in the world, period. If they ban that, don't you think everybody else should fucking follow suit? No. Because there's one person who's been throwing the oblique kick longer than Khalil has. And what, John Jones? And has never gotten a stoppage from it. John Jones? You know, bro, dude, like it's uh do you just, hey, I, hold on, hold on. Do you know how many stoppages have happened from oblique kicks? How many? One. Clear Roundtree? It's the only one. Okay. Ever get a stoppage but from the oblique about, kick? Like, but okay. I'm pretty sure there wasn't stoppages, but look what happened to fucking uh is it Tiago? Yeah, but I don't know how many of those John oblique Jones kicks. was fucking his legs up, bro. Right, and so Tiago was fucking his own legs up. I know, but he had to have surgery too because his shit was torn. Yeah, from his own fault. No, he threw oblique kicks like a motherfucker, bro. That's what he always, that's John Jones always. Hey, every time I fight John Jones, I'm like, all right, let me wear some knee pads and make sure my knees are bent because he, and I don't have pressure because he's going to oblique kick me and I have to wear goggles because he's going to eye poke me. But you literally just laid out the defense for the oblique kick just there. And Modestus literally came out in Khalil's defense over the oblique kick. It's damn good. I, I hate people going through those fucking, those are life-changing injuries. Everything can be a life-changing injury when you're getting punched in the face for money. Okay, but with your leg, yeah. though, bro, with the ACL, I've been to ACL surgery. It's the most horrific I, I, fucking hey, thing ever. I get it but you can literally get brain damage. Okay, true. Do you want, so uh, the elbow to your head is bone on bone. Yep. Should we outlaw that? Or should we make them wear elbow pads? Oh, man. I like elbow pads, but you know. But like, okay. But are you going to wear elbow at pads least, in a fight? At least, at least, okay. Okay, so I have a big discussion on that too because like when it comes to MMA stoppages, I appreciate that more than boxing stoppages, right? It's of the 10 knockdown rule. Like, because when it comes to brain damage, who has the most brain damage out of all the combat sports? Boxing, because all they do is punch each other in the face. Exactly. And when they have a knockdown rule, your brain's already hurt, and then you're still continuing to box, bro. And that's why they talk differently. Like, you know, like, at least in MMA, if you're hurt, it's over. It's done. So, but here's my other question. Should we outlaw leg locks and knee bars? Because that can do the same thing that the oblique kick did. I, 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 
agree, but there's a reason why when you do grappling tournament, they don't let, you can only do knee bars and heel hooks when you're a black belt. But and still, I think but still, should those it's be not It's a combat sport, but like, it, you, but still, but they're, but you're, but you're going to, uh, but you're going to eliminate 12 to six elbows. That was more so uh, a political thing. Okay, but still, the bleak hit is 10 times more dangerous than a 12 to 6 elbow. To the general public, yeah. I'll take a 12 to 6, I will eat a 12 to 6 elbow all day. But don't all bleak right. me. It's dangerous. Again, all depends on how you're set up to defend, number one. Also, there's only one person who's ever had a stoppage from it. But uh, not first, but there's a lot of other people that took damage from it and haven't got stopped though. Right. And if you can find any of those nope, people. Nope. Another one. Miguel Torres. Look that up. If you guys want to look at gruesome link videos and want to turn your head, he got a bleed kick and his leg went out the other side and he hasn't fought since. Done. Done. Are you trying to look this shit up? <laughs> Yeah, I'm pulling it up right now. <laughs> it's one of the most nastiest things you will ever see in your life. Pablo Alfonso, Miguel Torres, World Series of Fighting. Oh, let's turn that down. Well, uh, I think I thought it was kickboxing, bro. Uh, I mean, this one is World Series of Fighting. Well, when he got a bleed kicked, just put Miguel Torres knee getting destroyed and then that kick will come up. Uh, during kickboxing match. Yep. Let's see. See, there was glory that shit when it happened. Uh, former WEC bantamweight kickboxing match. Blah, blah, blah. Knee buckled in gruesome fashion on a kick. Where's the video of it? Come on, man. I know it was nasty, dude. I don't. I don't recommend it. You have a weak stomach and don't like people getting hurt. Like, I do not. Uh, yeah, I can watch pretty much anything. Watching that at all, to be honest. Um, but I'm more so of the opinion of show me the proof. Proof of people getting hurt? Proof of a oblique kick directly causing injury to people and those people wanting to do something about it. I think they need to do something about it, period. Their proof is fucking his ACL being gone and other people taking so much damage. It's not the point of the stoppage because fighters are tough. Fighters are tough, bro. And some of them will fight with a still 20 ACL there until it did. But it's the damage. The damage. The damage. The damage. The long term damage. Because like if, if he tore his ACL like Derek Till is going to be out for another year and a half. I get what you're saying, that it's the damage. It's not the stoppage. I get that. But again, show me people who took damage directly from the oblique kick that want to have the oblique kick outlawed. I'm pretty sure they do. They're just trying to be bitches and don't want to stand up for them. I'm you're saying a, it. Look, if, I if you're I if you're a fighter and you're not afraid, speak up. I say I, something. I got my ACL torn off a kick, not a bleak kick. That was a legal kick. I feel like I stuck the mat, but a bleak kick. I've been kicked there before. And I'm like, fuck, man. Like it's not. And even when I spar and people do it, I'm like, fuck you, bro. I mean, honestly, I can't fault Khalil. He's doing a legal move, technically. No, he is. So he is. I can't fault him. I just think if Glory is going to ban the kick, oh no, martial Glor- arts promotion should fall alive. Oh no, Glory is banning something. Yes, I'll if, ban if it when Glory a, is I'll, banning. I'll ban it when a Muay Thai strike. promotion bans it. How about that? Huh? I'll ban it when a Muay Thai promotion bans it. Why a Muay Thai promotion? They, those motherfuckers barely throw kicks anyway. Okay. But they elbow each other in the face. That's true. But Glory is one of the top striking promotions in the world. Oh, That's my he, point. Again, one of them. 
And Probably how many the number one striking striking promotions? UFC has grappling, bro. UFC how many, has hey, grappling, bro. How many other striking promotions ban the oblique kick? Just them. But they but they're the leader. They're a clear example. But is that to preserve their product? And or is fighter? that to make their fighters happy, which also would preserve their product? Yeah, because it's a fucked up kick, bro. They don't want all their guys out. I, I get it. I wouldn't want all my guys out either, but you wouldn't have to preserve your fighters if you had plenty of fighters. They do have a lot of fighters, bro. But they're allowed, like, knockouts and knees and shit. All that stuff is cool. But, like, I'm just saying, like, it's just... But an ACL injury, bro, is a lot. ACL injury takes about a year to come back from. Yeah. Just like, a you know, any sort of hardcore shoulder injury takes about a year. Well, I haven't had a shoulder yet. Hopefully I don't. I had my bicep, up, but that took me like six months. I hurt my shoulder like a bitch, and I still take – it takes a year to come back. So I didn't do it doing anything cool. I was doing fucking pull-ups. That's cool. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's cool. All right, but – that's 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 my point i wanted to bring up but i, uh, I know point. i'm probably going to get a lot of hate from my opinion but <laughs> i am of the opinion that if you can show me i respect your opinion but i'm just saying show like, me the numbers I, and it's a motherfucker bro it's, it's not cool i get it but the only way it's going to get out lot is if someone brings up a whole book full of numbers about the people that have had the issue i think we're getting close to it hmm after after what happened we'll after. see but the debut of the man over the pond patty patty the batty pimblet yes beat luigi vandramini in the first yeah. round via knockout first round knockout um he was taking some shots he um he was rocked i, I know dude like i i um I like the kids walk out uh, confidence dude. They have a deep ass him and Molly McCann have a deep ass fucking accent. So does uh, Till. Uh, he does. They're all but from Till, the same area. Yeah, but they don't really claim Till. I don't know why they didn't like really claim. Like they were just like, oh, Bisbeek. Like, you know, like uh, I don't get it. Patty uh, and Molly fight at the same gym, I believe. And Aspinall and Till are out of uh, Team Cowbon. Oh, that makes sense. I guess they're rival gyms or something. Probably not. I mean, they like each other. They did a video with all of them together this week. Oh, okay. Um, but, you know, it I, it. I don't think that they don't like each other. I don't think that they like each other. I think it's they know who each other are, but they're more so loyal to the gym than they are, you know, the country. I get it. I get it. I get it. You know, because every time the Australians spend on the car together or Hawaiians spend on the car together, they're amped. They're with it. I mean, most of them train out of the same gym, though. No. Especially like the New Zealand guys. They all train out of city kickboxing now. Most of them. Yeah. Most of them. But the Hawaiians are spread out, bro. Which one? Max Holloway? There's a couple of Hawaiians. But there's a couple of Hawaiians that live everywhere. So a lot of them move to Vegas. But just every time when they're on the car together, they're but just. There's a reason Vegas is called the Ninth Island. I know. <laughs> Got a huge Hawaiian presence. I know. But so Patty made his debut. Are you buying a train? Mm, I wouldn't say it's a hype train. I mean, he fought in Cage Fury, yeah. Cage Wars, whatever the hell it is. Um, he did pretty well over there. He's actually got a, from what I've heard, he's got a decent ground game for being a Briton. But, uh, you know, he's, uh, let me see him do it again. I know. I was, you're impressed with his speech afterwards. You probably couldn't understand him. I liked his uh, post post fight speech where he called Instagram a bunch of lizards because they took his account away. Who? He called out Instagram. They took his account away? Yeah. His original account. They took it away. And he said he wants his account back, you bunch of lizards. And then 
he uh proceeded he, to get he, like he must have posted something vulgar or something like that oh who knows but he uh oh no he talked about it on the pat mcafee show yesterday actually um he said that they removed it for bullying because he was replying to someone bullying him so someone was bullying him about something and he was you know clapping back at him and they got rid of his account for it ah so he uh, well but now I, he's not complaining about it they said that oh i'm gonna be the one that they're gonna call out i'm gonna be uh you know, which probably if you have a little hype, people are going to definitely call you out. I will, I am very interested to see the next matchup that they fucking give to him. I'm assuming they'll give it to him in the UK as well. Damn. More than likely. Either in the UK or Fight Island. Yeah, probably. Because they're uh, going back to Fight Island. Like, uh, do you think he's ready for a Jew Dober or uh, is it, I, I understand that was his first fight, but like, or Alex uh, Hernandez or any of those guys? Mm. No, uh, I don't know who all is actually in the lightweight division. Their rankings don't go deep enough. Mm. Um by the ring guy, he ain't ready for that, bro. No, I mean, give him a couple fights, let him get up to speed, and then see see how he does. Okay, okay, okay. Did you watch any of the prelims? Uh, here and there. I mean, wherever I was awake, I didn't really watch any of the prelims. But Molly McCann got a win off a of decision. Jack Shore won off a decision as well. Juliana Rosa got a submission on Charles Jordan. Yep. And Mark Andre Barrio won against Dasha Luniambula. Off the decision. Yeah. Yeah, man. We um shit, bro. We don't even have a fight card till September 18th. Yep, which is Anthony Smith, Ryan Span. Yeah. And yeah. currently, there's only four fights confirmed for that card right now. I know. Like four prelims. Uh, uh, three prelims <laughs> and Anthony Smith and Ryan Span. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Uh, I don't know what the fuck they're going to do. <laughs> well, they might not put it up there until the fighters like officially sign the contract. Bro, like it's like right around the corner. That doesn't mean anything. It does. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, I believe, like I said, we have Tito and Anderson. I think it's this weekend. Are you giving them money to watch that? No. Oh. I'm not. Good. Damn, dude. Well, originally, it's supposed to be Oscar De La Hoya versus uh, Peter Belfort, right? Yeah. And it's Vitor versus uh, oh, some other old fuck. Um, That's good. Used to be good. My type, Evander Holyfield. Right. How old is he? He up there. So you're claiming he's good. Evander? Yes, he is good. But I don't want. I want to know. Are they drug? They should be drug testing. I hope not. I want them juiced <laughs> to the fucking gills, man. <laughs> Vitor Belfort is on all the TRT. Dude, Vitor Belfort on steroids is the most scariest person I've ever seen. In my He's life. on all of the Mexican supplements. That's what I'm saying. Scariest person. But yeah, Oscar got COVID. He's in the hospital, so he cannot fight uh, Vitor Belfort. And he now... also can't do blow any. He can't do blow in there. So, you know. Probably getting Damn. clean. Shots fired. He does not look good. No, he uh, doesn't. No, he does not look good. He's fully Dude, vaccinated. Yeah, I know. At least he is fully vaccinated. And then Joe Rogan had COVID. He's uh, vaccinated too, believe it or not. Uh-uh. Is he? 
Yes. I thought he's not vaccinated. He is vaccinated. Everyone thinks that he's not. He's come out and he says that if you are young and healthy, that you probably don't need it, but he is vaccinated. Wow. Breaking news. Not breaking. I mean, he's talked about it many times on his podcast. No, breaking news. His most his most recent episode with Tom Segura, he said he's going to sue CNN. So why? Because <laughs> they're just they're saying that he's spreading lies and bullshit. And, you know, he's literally just saying what his doctor prescribed him to take. So he didn't ask for it. His doctor gave it to him. All those horse supplements. It's an anti. <sighs> Anti-horse, anti-race. No. <laughs> They've used it for prophylactic treatment. In places as well, which is like a preventative measure. So like mm-hmm. if you're in a third world country where it's possible to contract, you know, different illnesses that most people wouldn't get in a. But he had it though. Had what? He had COVID and then they gave him that for preventative measures. They gave it to him for treatment. Mm-hmm. Because his doctor believes that it works for treatment. But he also took about 800 other things, mm-hmm. including steroids. Sounds, so 800 sounds correct. Um, yeah. And then. Uh, Way to get me canceled, man. You know, I'm not. Dude, <laughs> I, 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 People are going to say, oh, this. he listens to Joe Rogan podcast. You know, what a what a turd. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just explaining who got COVID because Oscar got COVID. He got COVID. And then, um, yeah, and then in other fight news, Errol Hawani is going off. Right on now. everyone. On absolutely everyone. I love you, Errol. You don't he, have took, he took a public shit on Brendan Schaub. Dude, didn't he? And then uh, watching that podcast, Did Brendan Schaub's watching Brendan Schaub's podcast, he basically came out and said that uh, Brendan came out and said that basically he worked like 17 days in a row, which is oh, so fucking hard. Um, ah! uh, and the stress basically caused him to say, I'm going to take a vacation to Montana because he can. You know, so that doesn't make any sense, bro. That doesn't make any sense, the, bro. The stress, like what, 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 what? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you know the reasoning doesn't. It, I've worked, you know, fucking like three hundred days in a row. You think I give a shit? So, we'll, we'll wine, we'll wine, we'll wine. So he Ariel, Ariel came um, at Shab. Yeah, because Shab on I Fight Companion said that. Basically, because I turned it down, they went to Ariel. When in fact, Ariel had already gotten the job, regardless of what Brendan said. Right. And then Brendan is claiming that because of 17 days of straight work and stress and everything, it caused him to say some things that he would regret uh, later on. And Ariel, when he was talking about the situation on also the Pet McAfee show, great source of information. Um, he said that, uh, he's waiting for an apology from Brendan on one of Brendan's podcasts, uh, saying like verbatim, like, I'm sorry, Ariel. Cause I guess Ariel lit him up. In text message, and then Brendan apologized to him and said, "Okay, you can apologize publicly." And he hasn't did it yet. Uh, I didn't watch the whole episode of the Fighter and the Kid yesterday. Um, I haven't watched Below the Belt or King and the Sting, so I don't know if he's done it yet. But I mean, when he does it, because he should do it. I mean, he should. Yeah, he he should publicly come out and say, like, hey, Ariel, I'm sorry. And not just kind of, like, beat around the bush. Because not taking 17 days will wear on you, you know? Oh, my God. Whatever would I do? You know, and then not going to, I mean, going to Montana 
you know, we're wearing you too. Like not going there, we're wearing you too. So I understand where he's coming from, you know? Oh no. Whatever will I do? You might say something crazy and outlandish. That's what happened. That's every day. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to be near me. <laughs> uh, really? That's because you work 300 days. Oh, I work a lot of days. Like you work 17 in a row. That's what really got to me. Yeah. Oh, oh no. It wasn't like a nine to five. It was like a three hour spurt, like a two hour spurt here. Yeah, you know, a couple podcasts here and there, go up on stage, tell some dick jokes, make all the money, and then, you know, say, ah, oh, fuck it. I'm going to take my family to Montana because I'm a little stressed out. Blue collar, bro. Yeah. Blue collar. Yeah, sure. Sure thing. <laughs> if only I had it so easy. Big dad. Fuck, bro. Anyways, <laughs> anyway, that's the end of the show. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. See ya.